G'day Spurs fans, it's Paul Hotspur Hippie here, the only psychedelic soccer show on the internet. It's a bit of a windy day, I didn't bring my special microphone, let's hope it all handles up. Here I am in beautiful Wentworth Park, here's a common sight in Sydney these days. I've always hated wood chip and mulch, and it turns out that um, uh, one of the major suppliers has been bunging asbestos in it. So this is a very common sight in Sydney these days, who thought that would be the end of old Sydney town? wood mulch um, but that's capitalism for you folks I've been having a think a bit uh, an idea popped into my mind and um, either it's a, a daft idea or it's a it's a reasonable idea and if it's a reasonable idea I'm sure Ange has already thought of it because I give him credit at knowing a lot more about football than me and I was uh, you know with all the uh, speculation that's uh, going on in the uh, transfer market at the moment you know obviously we all hope that uh, a few players wander out of the revolving door and a few come in it might answer the question actually why certain players were played uh, my my uh, thinking beforehand has always been uh, to you know I've, I've said it a few times like you play you play our full backs and you try and tell them what, what Ange wants and then you know if they can do it or not, instead of patching up and making do. But it might turn out that there's a few million more reasons why he's been doing it as well. Because if the likes of, uh, let's just say, Royale, Ben Davies, Gio Lo Celso, Pierre-Emile Hoiberg, had just been uh, bench warmers the entire season, then we're probably gonna get rid of him anyway. Now, like some of these players might actually have bidding wars for them can you believe it and um you know to be fair to some of these players let's uh, let's go to royale for instance uh you can't question his effort and doing a, like an orthodox uh, right back role he does a serviceable job now the problem is at Tottenham Hotspur, that isn't good enough anymore because we want to win stuff. We want to be number one. Um, but he has done enough in his displays, I think. Uh, maybe not so much at right back, but a left back to show that even though when he comes up against, let's face it, some of the best wingers in the world, he, um, he, he can't quite cut it, that if you don't require a fullback to play against the best wingers of the world, he can do a job for you. You know, he can actually do it. Um, and so I'm beginning to think that it's actually a really smart move that Ange has been doing, you know. And look, like, I, like I, I've said before, I think the selections you know, have obviously cost us points and they've cost us games in some instances but when you look at the uh, the long-term picture uh, not only is the club certain that these players are not good enough for uh, Tottenham Hotspur but you know we can get a bit more a few more of that for them can't we so that's gonna do us in good stead when we're scouting around for players ourselves so uh, yeah, the more I think about it the more it made absolute sense that you know, regularly at 60 minutes or 65. Oh no, we bring in Pierre Emil Hoiberg on again. Oh no. Well, we might get a few extra bucks for him. So uh, I think it's been a smart move. I think it's been a very smart move. Uh, I'm still on uh, in a happy Spursy frame of mind. It's always good to finish the uh, the season out with a win and European football and. Um, I am just looking forward to what happens what happens next in uh, this journey we're on with Ange at Spurs. Um, from day one, I hope you've got the idea that Ange wants to win. Uh, he's, his comments, I think, have been misconstrued when he sort of says, you know, he's kind of maybe appeared to be dismissive of Champions League. That's not the case at all. It's the fact that he wants to be number one in the Premier League. And if uh, the club don't support him 
he, he won't be around. He won't be around. He, he wants to win. He wants to be number one, and that's it. And if he doesn't think that he's got the uh, resources to be able to do it, um, then I don't think he'll stand up for it. But the indications so far are pretty good that the club is behind him and it's going to back him. And bear in mind, you know, we're not talking about uh, we're not talking about uh, a, a, a Jose or Antonio that uh, want the big dollar players today to win today. And also, in fairness to them shorter term contracts as well, especially with Antonio. Um, I don't see really what a manager can do uh, in 18 months or less as it turns out, because he, he did leave earlier. But when you've got a four year job to do, um, you can take your time a bit. You don't have to do that. And we haven't been doing that. And we're, you know, one thing I'm looking forward to this window is to get rid of the last, the last, uh, stench hanging around the place of uh, the Hitchens era at Tottenham because oh my god if you talk about a, uh, a guy that um, ensured that we were struggling for half a decade it was that guy with the purchases he made some of which are still hanging around um, and we've been doing smart purchases you know I think we have you know we've been it's almost like we've got a um, we're looking we, we are looking just at the next couple of years. Look, we have bought some um, ready-to-go players like uh, Vicario. He's 26, which is young for a goalkeeper, and Madison. Um, but we also have a nice pipeline of young talent. It's a, it's a very young team we've got in, and I think it's a real credit to them, actually, that this year they, they played so much better than I think anyone thought they would. You know, especially like Mickey van der Ven getting off a plane and two days later he's playing against Brentford and he's got his uh, call up to the Netherlands, which is brilliant for him. I mean, well deserved. And, you know, the Netherlands, if it's one thing about their team at the moment, they're not short of defenders. So for him to break into that outfit is really good news for him. Well done him. But then we've also got uh, Destiny Udoggy, who's had a, 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 a mind-blowing season. A mind-blowing season. Um, Pat Matassar, a player that was overlooked by Conte. And I must admit, the two times I saw him play under Conte, I was scratching my head. Why aren't we playing this kid more? He looks great. And uh, he seems to be getting stronger and stronger. So these players in their early 20s over the next year, well, even immediately, even next year, are going to be a hell of a lot mature. But then we look at the likes of uh, Bergbaum, and the uh, young Croatian defender, I've forgotten his name, uh, Ashley Phillips, who's had a great year at uh, Portsmouth. Um, Belize, you know, we don't know about that one yet. It just seems to be that we aren't just building for the next season or next two seasons. We are starting to, um, you know, have a, well, sorry, a pipeline of young players coming through and as they mature they've been you know we've got more young players coming in the academy's looking a lot smarter at the moment with our uh, with our kids in the final and, uh, and the other kids made the final Mikey Moore when he came on the pitch didn't look out of place you know 16 year old good on him good on him a fine young man um, so it's all going to go silly of course with speculation in the next few weeks and I'm in a fortunate position because I know bugger all about uh, about um, oh, I've just seen a guy wearing an England top here. Here we go. Dream, we got a chance in the Euros, mate. Yeah, I reckon. You reckon? Yeah. Despite Southgate, you reckon? I reckon the team's good enough despite Southgate. Despite Southgate, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm in a fortunate position. I'm in a fortunate position um, because I'm blissfully ignorant of uh, most players that don't play for Tottenham because I just don't have time to watch that much football. Uh, something that may change because the channel is on the verge of 3,000 uh, subs and I reckon five times that amount I'll be able to do it full time. So I'll be able to watch more football and know what the hell I'm talking about. But because I don't know many, you know, much about players outside the club, you can throw any name at me and I've got no preconceived bias or think they're rubbish or whatever it makes it much easier for me to think if Ange picks them 
or signs off on them, then it's good enough for me. And when you think of the job he's done this year, getting us to fifth place, six points better than last year, and uh, losing our uh, losing 30 goals out the door a couple of days before the season starts, uh, a massive injury crisis, a dip in form, a dip in confidence. For us to actually get to that in the end, you've got to look at it as a damn good first season by Ange. And you know, a lot of the players, let's hope that they, they learn a bit about mentality and steely resolve. And, um, you know, that they, they've learned something from their dip in form as well. Maybe some have, maybe some haven't. We will find out this window and we'll certainly find out next season. So I'm optimistic, folks. I think the future is bright. Future is bright. It's going to be silly season starting soon. At least we've got the Euros to distract us away from that because talking about that day after day does my head in. So at least I have some football to talk about. So uh, I hope you're all doing all well out there. Come on, you Spurs. Peace and love, man. That's it.